Well, good morning. Happy New Year. Well, let's say it again with gusto. Happy New Year. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're going to invite you to stand with us. We're going to sing. This is a service of carols, so we're going to sing some of our favorites from the Christmas season. This is God Rest Ye, We Three Kings. Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power and we have gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, this blessed angel King. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. You may be seated. Well, it's great to have everybody here today. Happy New Year. Year. Uh, Hopefully you had a great Christmas and a week as we've worked into the new year. I want to thank everyone who participated in just really making Christmas Eve celebrations possible. We had over 2,100 people who gathered for Christmas Eve and heard the gospel and celebrated the birth of our Lord. And again, thank you to everyone who participated in that. I just want to share a few um, announcements with you this morning. Uh, Please take note of the Bible studies that are beginning next week. On Sundays, we'll be having Managing Your Finances God's Way and also 1 Samuel. And then on Wednesday evenings, Ben is going to teach a course, Seven Steps to Bible Skills. Doesn't matter if you're brand new to the Bible or maybe you've been in the Bible for many, many years. It's just a way to guide you to get through the Bible, how you get around the Bible. It's a great course that way. 
And if you need to change an attitude with anything in your life, that's what the Bible study I'm going to be leading, Lord, change my attitude. And looking at how we can go from one attitude then to a more uh, blessed attitude in life. So those are the new Bible studies that are coming up. And just want to say uh, as we begin a new year that it's great to begin it in the Lord's house. It's a time of renewal. Many people I know make resolutions. Ben will refer to that in his message. But what a great way to come here to begin anew with God, celebrate the successes of our life, but also to place before him the areas where we need to grow, areas where maybe we need to improve and even become more faithful and to invite him in to partner with us and, and guide us in that way. So it's great to have you in, in worship this morning. And I'm going to ask you to please stand if you would. We're going to change things around. We're going to share the peace now and, uh, and do that at this point and a little bit later. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. And come out of the pew, greet one another with Happy New Year's and uh, greet as many people as possible.
The Lord be with you. And let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Lord God, we come into a new year and we thank you for the opportunities that are before us. We pray, Lord, that as we open ourselves up to hear your word today and, and to look at what lies ahead of us, that we also, as we look back, that, that you would provide healing and strength from the years past and that as we move forward into a new year, Lord, that we would be open to your guide and your leading uh, so that all that you have before us and really the dreams you have before us, Lord, uh, that they would come, become fulfilled, not only because you help to set those, but also because you give us the strength to fulfill them. And in your precious name we pray, amen. Okay, you may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite all of our children, age three through grade two, to make their way out to the back. I know Eve is in the back. She's going, they have a special uh, movie they're going to show during this time today for our children. And then they're going to come back to be with us during the celebration of Holy Communion. So go ahead to the back. Miss Eve is back there today. And then I believe Greg is going to read. So Greg is at the uh, podium, and we're going to share the uh, reading today from the Gospel of Luke. Good morning. Today's lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, starting with the 15th verse. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. And happy New Year to all of you. It's hard to believe that a new year is already upon us, right? That a year has already come and gone. And what a year it's been, am I right? Um, I don't know how many of you stayed up last night and watched the 2016 in review kind of uh, specials that they were doing before the ball was dropped, um, but I'd like to recap just a few highlights and some lowlights of this past year in no particular order. We elected a new president of the United States. There were the Summer Olympic Games held in Rio. The Juno space probe finally entered Jupiter's orbit. The Chicago Cubs won the World Series. The Dow Jones, for the first time, closed above 19,000. There was the Brexit vote, which saw the United Kingdom leave the European Union. The World Health Organization declared the Zika virus an international public health emergency. There were many natural disasters, such as the earthquakes in Ecuador and Italy. There was Hurricane Matthew, which devastated Haiti and the southern coastline. There were terrible wildfires in Tennessee and even more loss of life from things such as the rising gun violence, the shooting in Florida, and the terrorist attacks uh, globally. There are many more things that I could have mentioned about this previous year, this past year, but I think it goes without saying that it has been a year of ups and downs. Depending on your outlook, the downs may outweigh the ups. In your personal life, you know the triumphs and the failures the joys and the sorrows that this past year has brought you. Some of you, I've heard and may say, 2017 has to be better than 2016 because it can't get much worse. But to quote Paul Harvey, the radio personality, in times like these, it helps to remember that there have always been times like these. See, there is nothing that this world can throw, us, throw at us that God has not seen before. There's nothing that takes God by surprise. There's nothing that God can't take and use it and turn it around 
and use it for good. So as we move into the new year, it's customary to look back at what the previous year has held, but also to look ahead at what our hopes are for the upcoming year. By a show of hands, uh, how many of you kept your New Year's resolutions from last year? Don't lie, this is church. All right, Teresa, one person. <laughs> right, how about this? How many of you even remember your New Year's resolutions from last year? That's probably a better question. Well, statistics say that 50% of all New Year's resolutions are uh, failed within the first 30 days of the New Year. So before January is even over, 30, or 50% of all New Year's resolutions fail. And then 90% of all New Year's resolutions are forgotten about completely by midway through the year, by June, about six months into the year. Now, I think the reason for this is because so many of us try to make these changes on our own willpower. Whether it's a commitment to live healthier or to break a bad habit like gossiping or to start a new habit like getting into your Bible more often or being in daily prayer and devotion. It's no wonder that so many of our resolutions fail because unless we base our foundation on God, unless we rely on his strength and we're continually and daily abiding in that, then we're destined to fail. See, human resolve will only carry us so far. But with that being said, I'd like to encourage all of you this morning that life change is possible, but only with God. And I'd like to point out three resolutions I think that we can make today, taken from the example of the shepherds from our gospel reading. This passage is probably familiar to most of you, at least it should be this time of year. There were these shepherds who were keeping watch over their flocks at night. And by the way, it was customary at that time for shepherds to kind of pool together their, their flocks so that it would be easier for them to take shifts and, you know, some could sleep while others watched and then they, they took shifts throughout the night. Well, then all of a sudden, the, the sky lights up when this brilliant angel appears, followed by a host of angels, and the sky is filled with all these angels. And you can imagine the fear that the shepherds experienced. But then the angel said to them, what? Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior is born to you. So after the angels give the shepherds this, this good news, this is where we pick up in our gospel reading, the angels leave and the shepherds say to themselves, let us go to Bethlehem and see this child which the angels told us about. So they arrive in Bethlehem and they find Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And after seeing the Savior for themselves, they decide to go out and to tell everybody the news about what they'd seen and heard, which was just as had been told them. And everyone who hears them is amazed. And we read that they return then full of praise and thanksgiving to God. If you think about it, in a way, the shepherds were really the first evangelists. See, they heard the gospel. And by the way, the word gospel just means good news. This good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. So the shepherds heard the gospel. They responded to it in faith. And then they spread the gospel. And those three steps are really the same steps that we as Christians are called to follow. We hear the gospel, we respond to it personally, and then we spread the gospel. And those are the same, that's the same formula loosely that our three resolutions are going to follow. The first resolution that we can take from the example of the shepherds is to resolve to listen. Before they could do anything, the shepherds first had to listen to what the angels were telling them. This may sound simple, but... There's a difference between hearing and listening. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you that that's true. See, listening goes beyond just hearing the words that somebody says to us, doesn't it? Listening requires being attentive and receptive to the words that are being said. It's easy for us today to say, well, if an angel ever appears to me, of course I'd be attentive. Of course I would listen to them. But until that happens, don't be so sure of yourself. Remember Zechariah, who when an angel visited him, he had some trouble being a receptive listener. He heard the words that were being spoken to him, but he still had some doubts, some reservations. He said, how can this be since my wife is, is barren? She cannot have this child. And he doubted, and he asked the angel for a sign that, that she would give birth. And as a result, he was stricken mute until the baby was born. Now, I bet after nine months of being silent, Zechariah began to work on his listening skills a little bit. Don't you think? 
Uh, this is a, a true story to the best of my knowledge. A few years ago, uh, the public school that my father works for decided to set a record for the most amount of limousines that they could fit in the school parking lot for a school function. So they put somebody in charge of, of booking all of the chauffeurs to drive these limousines. And time went on, and about a week before this function, this big box arrived to the, to the attention of the school principal. The school principal looks at it, and she's puzzled because she doesn't remember ordering anything. And so she opens it up, and then lo and behold, inside this box were 100 shofars. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, I have a picture. A shofar is a ram's horn, which is used for a Jewish religious ceremony. They blow into the ram's horn, and it ushers in God's presence. So somewhere along the line, the message got mixed between 100 chauffeurs and 100 chauffeurs. <laughs> See, it's one thing to think that we heard someone correctly and another thing entirely to genuinely listen and receive what they have said. The shepherds demonstrated their receptiveness to the gospel when they said, come, let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened. They didn't say, let's go see if this is true. No, they received the word as it was given to them and they acted upon it. One thing that I think all of us could work on on this upcoming year is to be better listeners. In an article in Forbes magazine, Diane Schilling uh, notes that in today's high-tech, high-speed, high-stress world, communication is more important than ever. Yet we don't devote the time needed to really listen to one another. According to Schilling, Genuine receptive listening has become a rare gift. And the better listeners we are, the more effective we will be at work and the deeper our relationships will be with our children and with our friends. And she also believes that better listening skills can help save money and they can also help save marriages. Well, on a relational level, we can become better listeners by following the example given in James 1, 19 and 20. It says this, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness that God desires. See, being quick to listen and slow to speak means being present and attentive when somebody is speaking to us. It means eliminating distractions during conversation. Mute the TV, turn your cell phone on silent, or better yet, turn it off. Keep your ears open and your mouth shut. Don't obsess over what you're going to say in response. And don't try to make the conversation a contest to see who is more interesting or who has a better story. In terms of our prayer and our devotional life, we would all do well to listen more intently. I don't know about you, but in my tendency in prayer is to do most of the talking first. And then if I remember to, I'll kind of sit still and be quiet for as long as it's comfortable, and then that's about it. But I want to make listening one of my resolutions this year, to be intentional about quieting myself before God and really hearing what he has to say. You know, a wise man once said, you can get far more done in a day with one hour of prayer and seven hours of work than with eight hours of work alone. And I think that's true. To be intentional about taking that first portion of our day and really spending it with God, really listening for what he has to say to us. I think many of you would be surprised at, at what God has to say. Well, the second resolution that I think we can take from the example of the shepherds is to resolve to seek Christ. See, the shepherds, once they heard the good news, they responded to it. They set out to go meet the newborn king, the Messiah. They sought him out and they found him. In Jeremiah 29, 13, God says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. You know, I say this not in judgment because only God knows each person's heart. But I think there are far too many Christians who have never really sought Christ beyond their initial conversion experience. It's kind of like receiving a gift from somebody who shows up on your doorstep, a, a loved one who shows up on your doorstep and gives you this gift, and you take it and you say thank you, and then you just kind of close the door in their face. That's, that's not really a natural response. It's not a response born out of joy and true appreciation. See, 
Most nominal Christians that I've known tend to feel this need to rationalize themselves. They'll say, well, I don't need to be a member of church to be a Christian. I can love God on my own. And while that is technically true, the reality is that your fruits will always find you out. And the sad truth is that most of the friends that I've known who are of that mindset are also not bearing godly fruit. The excuses abound. You know, we're, we're too busy, we're too tired, life's too hectic, so on and so forth. But God's word is clear. Seek him with your whole heart, not half-heartedly. You know, the Apostle Paul went so far as to make this his only resolution. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, of course, Paul did know a great deal more than just his Christology. Much of the New Testament is written from, by Paul. It's comprised of his letters and his epistles, which outline doctrines such as justification and the work of the Holy Spirit. He's probably one of the most well-educated biblical authors. But what Paul is doing here is that he's using hyperbole to emphasize the importance and the primacy of the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's not that Paul somehow forgot about creation or, or eschatology or the end times, but he resolved to keep the main thing the main thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what Christianity is about. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, take a look at what Paul says in the very next few verses in 2 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and 5. He says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Just this past week, I saw no less than three examples of God's power. And it just so happens that all three of those examples happen to involve automobiles. Uh, The first one is while we were visiting family, I I got to talking to my brother-in-law and somehow we got on the topic of miracles. And he started sharing this story with me how he and his brother one day decided to go to this concert in New Jersey, which is about a two hour drive for them. So they're, they're driving and it was raining and all of a sudden the rain started to pick up and get heavier and heavier. And they're about halfway there so about an hour into the trip and then they got this prompting just something told them that they should turn around and go home so they listened to it they decided that they should turn around and so they did it and they went they turned around and they went home and then about a week later they went to visit their uncle and without prompting their uncle told them that he had a vision a week earlier that the two of them were in a bad car accident and that they didn't make it out of the crash And so they compared their stories and they realized that it was at the exact same time that they were driving, they were in the car, and they were on their way to this uh, concert and they got that prompting to turn around. And their uncle immediately prayed for them. And uh, it's just too much to be a coincidence. Well, the other two stories that I have are from our very own congregation. And both families have given me permission to share these. I don't know how many of you uh, are aware, but last week uh, at our at our uh, Christmas Eve services, after the four o'clock service, one of the families in our church was in a very bad car accident on Mountain Road. They were driving down Mountain Road and they were leaving the four o'clock Christmas Eve service and they decided to make a U-turn and they were struck, they were T-boned by this SUV and the car flipped and one of them was ejected from the car and everybody was rushed down to shock trauma. And uh, unbeknownst to us, uh, it was about this time, it was in between the four o'clock and the seven o'clock service, I had gone over to Wawa Uh, to pick up some uh, snacks and a couple drinks for my family and I. And I had seen this ambulance drive by on Mountain Road. And when my wife and I see ambulances or first responders, we make it a point to say a prayer of blessing over them. So my prayer was just a, a simple, Lord, be with everybody involved. Lord, please protect everyone involved. Unbeknownst to me that it was most likely that they were responding to that very same accident. Well, amazingly... Um, they were actually just here last night at last night's service. Everybody's home and the most serious injury was a broken pelvis and a couple staples in their head which they're having removed on Tuesday. But everyone's doing well and uh, in good spirits and they're saying that this is nothing less than a miracle. The third story that I have for you is uh, Reese Turner, our, our high school youth director. 
her eldest son, Jeremiah, is a state trooper. And the day after Christmas, he was on patrol with, with his partner and they were driving an SUV and I actually have a picture of, of the vehicle. They were driving this car and at 110 miles an hour struck a tree, which caused the car to flip and to catch fire. And it just so happened that a couple of bystanders were there and were able to pull them from the car just before it caught fire. And the, and the first responders, when they went and they surveyed the scene, they said that Jeremiah's seat had been crushed within inches and that it was impossible for him to have made it out of the car, let alone alive, unless God himself removed him from that car. And Jeremiah was just here two nights ago at our uh, concert, and he's doing well, he's fine, and he, he again attributes this to God's power. Friends, if that's not a testimony to God's power, I don't know what is. And when we resolve to seek God, what we will find is that he surrounds us day in, day out, that he is still at work in our lives today and every day. Well, going back to our scripture reading, the third resolution that we can take from the shepherds is to resolve to praise God. After they went and they told everyone what had happened, we read that the shepherds returned and they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. You see, after we encounter Christ and experience the gospel personally, the appropriate response is to live a life of praise. Praise is more than just singing some songs on a Sunday morning, although that's certainly an expression of praise. But praise is an attitude of the heart that overflows from the joy of abiding in God, of sharing our life with him of being in a relationship with him. As the psalmist puts it, praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Folks, God does bear our burdens every day. And he takes our, our sorrows, our fears, our shame. He puts them on his shoulders. And in exchange, he gives us his yoke, which is easy, his burden, which is light. And when we are securely resting in that fact, there is peace available to us. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And we can be free to praise him with hearts unburdened. There was this uh, Lutheran conference a while back in Omaha. And everybody who attended this Lutheran conference was given a balloon upon entering. And they were told that at any point during the service when they felt the need to express the joy in their heart, to, to blow up this balloon. And so uh, as the, the service went on, a couple balloons were filled, and then a couple more. And then by the end of the service, uh, the preacher was just about finished with his sermon, and about a third of the balloon still remained somewhat deflated. Until from the back, this man stood up and he, and he shouted, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! See, I guess uh, being Lutherans, they didn't feel like they were permitted to say those things, and that's why they had those balloons. But the preacher stopped, and he said, he asked the man why, what caused him to do that. And the man said, humbly, why am I going to, what, what use is it wasting my breath on this balloon if I can't praise the God who gives me breath? And at that moment, all the balloons were released, and a resounding amen echoed through the congregation. Do you know that each of us takes about approximately 23,000 breaths per day? Multiply that by 365 days and you get roughly 8,395,000 breaths that will be allotted to you for 2017. Each breath is a reminder that God isn't finished with us yet. Each breath is a gift that sustains us. Like Job, we too can say, the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. You know, we praise God for the moments that take our breaths away, but how often do we take each every other breath for granted? Friends, we are all given the same amount of time in a year, roughly the same amount of breaths. The question is, how will you spend yours for 2017? Amen. Let us pray.
Gracious God, we, we thank you for this past year. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, which has been with us throughout. Lord, that day in and day out, you are unchanging, that your love is steadfast. So God, we, we look to this past year. We, we give you all of our joys, our sorrows, Lord, and some of the things that we may have to leave behind. But God, as we look ahead to 2017, we just pray that you would bless us, that you would encourage us and strengthen us to, to make changes that need to be made. Lord, maybe that we can be better listeners or that we can seek you with our whole hearts. God, that we would resolve to, to praise you, not just in the moments that are extraordinary, but in the everyday and the mundane. And God, as always, we thank you and we ask all of these things in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Let's share in the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come to worship you as, as our King, as our Savior, as the one who came among us. We truly give you thanks for giving us the opportunity to be in a relationship with you and as the new years come upon us to grow with you and even to become more like you. So we pray, Lord, that we would truly open our ears, but especially our hearts, that we would hear and listen that we would be open to your guiding hand, that we would continue to seek your counsel and your guidance. And Lord, that the fruit that you wish to come forth from our lives, that that truly may occur uh, because of our openness to your will and our openness to your leading. Lord, as we gather here, we know that <clears throat> there are sins that we bring into the new year. Maybe there are areas of growth that are very personal to us we know that there are areas that we need to move forward in so that we might be more faithful to you and be a, be a blessing to others in a more powerful way, personal way in our lives. Lord, help us to be humble enough as we begin the new year to celebrate our areas of faithfulness, but also to bring to you and lay, not just at the foot of the manger, but at the foot of your cross, our sins and our shortcomings, and that we know, Lord, that you will that you will come and forgive us of our shortcomings and sins and renew us so that we might be a new creation for your will. And Lord, we come in, in, into a new year and we pray for our world. We know in Romans, Paul talks about how the all creation, Lord, groans because 
every aspect of creation is affected by sin. And as we see the pain that has occurred in 2016 and especially the lack of peace among people within our communities and even in our own nation and around the world, we certainly pray for peace, that it would begin with us, that it would begin in our communities, that you would be with all those, Lord, who have been chosen to lead us in our land and around the world, that that our decisions may lead more towards peace in 2017 than the lack of it that we saw in 2016. And Lord, we pray because we know you are a living God and among us for you to be with those who are in need of your healing. You know their challenges better than we do, that all would know the reassurance of the closeness of your presence, and that you'd especially be with Mark Franker, with Austin Van Nostrand, Gavin Liebershaw, Pray that you'd be with Mary White and Ruth Rusing, with the Johansons, Don and Debbie, and Jeremiah as well, the Johansson family and Jeremiah as they recover from the car accidents. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Ruth Ann and Phil Einhorn, Del and Roy Founds, Dick Brown, Dual Homan, Jake Roberts, Bob Nags, and Tim Burns. We lift before you Charlotte Hilberg and Donna Hostetler and Dwayne Parker. And that you'd be with Bill, by the way, and Joan Ackerman, and all those that are in need of your healing power that we mention now quietly or out loud before your throne of grace. And Lord, we pray that you'd continue to be with, with Rhonda and Jeremy as this past week we held the service of resurrection for Jerry Griffith, that you would continue to comfort them during this time of their bereavement. And Lord, again, as we go into a new year, we especially place our families before you. We give thanks that last evening that Brian Robinson and our very own Ashley Musel were brought together in Christian marriage, that you would be with them as they begin their married life together. But be with all of our families, Lord, all of us within our relationships, that our homes may truly be a place where your presence dwells. And in your precious name we pray, amen. My friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. hear each spoken need yet love is way too much to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your trials of this life are your mercy 
dancers in disguise We pray for wisdom Your voice to hear And we cry in anger When we cannot feel you near We doubt your goodness doubt your love as if every promise from your word is not enough and all the while you hear each desperate plea and long that we'd have faith to believe cause what if your blessings come
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and always grant you his peace. Amen. Shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. He laid the Savior beside the manger. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! I hear, and I hear the angels sing. Now, I'm going to give you some homework for next week, okay? No, all. I heard somebody say all. Or... Make sure when you come to church, you know the date of when you were baptized. And you're going to see what your date of baptism 
and something we're going to do with water and also the number 21 with all how all that relates to each other, right? So make sure you know the date of your baptism for next week's worship. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, thanks for watching. Trinity Lutheran Church can be found at 1100 Philadelphia Road in Joppa, Maryland. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. That's a thumbs up button right here on the YouTube page. And you could also be a big help to us if you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much, and God bless.